සුතින් අධිවේගය පරදා ඔබ මවිත කරවන වේගයක් බිඳ ගන්න. පියවර තුලකින් ශ්‍රී ලංකා ටෙලිකොම් ෆයිබර් ඔප්ටික් ජාලයට එක් වන්න. slp.lk වෙත පිවිසෙන්න. Making headlines first at 9. Tourism and employment. Prime Minister Ranil Wickremesinghe draws links between tourism development and increased job creation at the launch of a tourist friendly three wheeler service. Legitimate opposition opposition leader questions the validity of one party being in the government and opposition as partner the government the same party cannot be the official opposition joint opposition however brushes off the claim position taken up by the leader of the opposition lacks logical consistency and legal validity medical relief Minister of Health announces price reductions across 20 essential medical drugs including 10 cancer drugs with immediate effect. Match fixing allegations former cricketers Arjun Ranathunga and Arvind De Silva respond to allegations leveled by former SLC president Telanga Sumathipala. If we wanted to why why should we just bring it to the notice of the management because there was no reason. Old habits Allegations of North Korea building new ballistic missiles. Good evening, bringing you news from across Sri Lanka and around the world on other than a twenty-four seven. First at nine, I'm Indi Vari Amwath. We begin with your top stories here at home. Minister of Health Dr. Rajat Sena Ratna today announced the government's decision to reduce prices of 20 essential medicinal drugs, including 10 cancer treatment drugs. He made the announcement as a, at a special ceremony held at the Nelumpukuna Mahinda Rajapaksa Theatre, which was also attended by Prime Minister Ranil Wickremesinghe and President Maithripala Sirisena. Minister of Health Dr Rajit Sena Ratna was felicitated at a special ceremony for his contribution to the health sector over 1300 days since he took up the health portfolio the event was held under the patronage of both president maithripala sirisena and prime minister ranil wickremesinghe dr sena ratna was appointed as minister of health on the 9th of january in 2015 and was appointed the vice president of the world health organization minister dr rajit sena ratna was also given the accolade of suwapati at the event today Professor Carlo Fonseca said that the first health minister was SWRD Bandarnayake and then he went on to say that current president Maithripala Sirisena who was the former health minister left and then became the head of state what he gave was a prediction which is very good i personally bless it i would like to tell the health minister to think about whether to leave or to stay he should lend it some thought i extend my well wishes and blessings for all of his endeavors We reduced prices of 48 essential medicines. I will also decrease the prices of another 20, out of which 10 are cancer treatment drugs. Dr. Lakuma Fernando recently told me that they are very happy to carry on with channeling practices because back then they had to prescribe medicine by determining the economic status of patients. Those patients who used to find it difficult to bear the costs are now coming back to thank him for prescribing the best medicine at a lower price. We even got economic benefits out of this. We were able to reduce the annual sum spent on patients in a year by 4.4 billion rupees. And they're asking as to what we've done. Did any other government since independence did something like this? Everyone can get sick, but now all of them can reap the benefits. The joint opposition is accusing the government of closing down the State Pharmaceuticals Corporation and importing 48 medicinal drugs with the collaboration of the Indian company TIL Healthcare Private Limited. Members of the joint opposition expressed these views in a media briefing held in Colombo today. State Pharmaceuticals Corporation that produced pharmaceutical drugs is now closed. Along with the Indian company TIL Healthcare Private Limited, the Sri Lankan government is now planning to import 48 medicines that used to be produced here by the state corporation. We would like to ask Minister of Health Dr. Rajit Sena Ratna as to who are the directors of TIL Healthcare Private Limited and if he has any relatives working in this pharmaceutical company. The health ministry is even planning to import over 4 billion drugs which can easily be produced in the country. 
8,000 kilograms of raw material to produce a certain drug are being wasted away at the moment. Instead of giving him awards for so-called good he did for the health sector, we should give him an award by way of a prison term for wasting public money. In a backdrop where petitions are filed at the Supreme Court against the thousands of pages long untranslated English version of the Singapore-Sri Lanka agreement, Minister of Finance Mangala Samaravira issued a gazette exempting 182 commodities from customs duties. As per the Revenue Protection Act, a finance minister can only do something like this only if the Cabinet of Ministers approve it. Did the Cabinet give its approval for this? Our lawyers are looking into the matter now and the Economic Research Unit of the Joint Opposition will file a case at the Supreme Court on the matter. <laughs> There have been much conjecture surrounding the position of opposition leader, with the joint opposition making repeated calls for a change in the identity, citing incumbent R. Sambantan's lack of objections to the government's agenda. Today, opposition leader R. Sambantan moved to respond to the claims by the joint opposition and said that a party within the coalition government cannot be the official opposition as it is an absolute contradiction of parliamentary principles and practices. Responding on the claim, Chairman of the Sri Lanka Podujana Peramuna, Professor G. L. Pires, however, brushed off the notion put forth by the opposition leader, saying the position taken by Sambandan lacks logical consistency and legal validity. Think too much about the position of the official leader of the opposition. The Honourable Speaker of Parliament has taken a decision in regard to this matter based upon parliamentary principles and practices. The members of one party cannot be both in the government and at the same time constitute the official opposition in Parliament. The UPFA, the Sri Lanka Freedom Party, is a partner in the government. They are in alliance with the main political party, the UNP, in government. Several of them hold ministerial positions as partners in government. The same party cannot be the official opposition. The same party cannot become the leader of the opposition. If one party can sit in government and in opposition, that would be an absolute contradiction of parliamentary principles and practices. It's on this basis that the Speaker has made a decision and I will, to the best of my ability, function as a leader, leader of the opposition. But Chairman of the Sri Lanka Podujana Peramuna, Professor G. L. Pires, hit back at the opposition leader's claims, saying that the stance of R. Sambandan lacks logical consistency and legal validity. The comments on this issue by the leader of the opposition and the rulings by the speaker are exactly the same. The problem is that their stance has neither legal nor logical validity. Some of the members elected on the beetle leaf ticket are members of the government. They have accepted portfolios. Others are in the opposition. On three consecutive occasions when budgets were presented, some as ministers voted for the budget. Others in opposition voted against the budget. Mr. Sambandan says it cannot happen. It has happened. This is not on one occasion. This has been happening continually during the last three years. The position taken up by the leader of the opposition lacks logical consistency and legal Legal validity. Has Mr. Sambandan on any one solitary occasion, has he raised his voice in parliament against the government on any issue outside matters pertaining to the north and the east? Not at all. He has always functioned as an integral part of the government. So his natural role today is not in the opposition but in the government. This is a distortion created in parliament. And there is a black and white contrast between the political situation at the ground level and the entirely artificial situation in Parliament. Professor Pires went on to say that considering the Commonwealth precedents, our Sambandan has no right to function in his position. If one is talking of Commonwealth or parliamentary traditions precedents, Mr. Sambandan is in a worse position. He does not have 10% of the seats in Parliament. In a Parliament consisting of 225 seats, Mr. Sambandan has only 16 seats. So if you apply Commonwealth precedence, he has absolutely no right to function as leader of the opposition. Still in local news, UPF a parliamentarian and leader of the Pivituru Hela Rumea, Udaya Gamampila claims that the government is wary of provincial council elections in the face of an imminent defeat. Addressing a media briefing in Colombo today, the parliamentarian accused the government's deliberate postponement of provincial council polls as a gambit. Provincial council election is 
Now, if you are to hold the election as decided based on the electorate based method, of course, delimitation report, which has already been prepared, should be approved by the parliament with two third majority. On the other hand, two third majority is required to abolish the electorate based method and go back to the previous method. It means, in order to push the electorate based method forward or to abolish it, either side require the two third majority. At the moment, parliament is sharply divided into two groups as pro and against the electorate based, electorate based method. Right now, no group, frankly, they may be able to secure the simple majority, but no group has the two third majority at the moment. That's why provincial council election got stuck in a legal issue and as a result, election cannot be held in January 2019 as agreed and announced by the government. To be very frank, the government doesn't want to hold this election. There will be an election, provincial council or whatever. Then, of course, president and prime minister will have to fight again in public. After the imminent disastrous defeat, there will be a no-confidence motions against the government. There will be rebels within the party against the leadership. Ministers may resign and sit in the opposition. Lot of negative repercussions for the government. The United National Party accuses the Government Medical Officers Association of harboring a politicized agenda outside their mandate. Addressing a media briefing at the party headquarters, Sirikota Today, parliamentarian Mujbur Rahman alleged that the GMOA is politically backing former President Mahinda Rajapaksa and former Defence Secretary Gautabe Rajapaksa to bring them back to power. <laughs> We see Dr. Padania sitting next to Gautabe Rajapaksha during the programs of Elia. It is clear for whom the chairman of the GMOA works for and what their agenda is. The GMOA is trying to bring a fascist and a racist rule to the country. The GMOA is a political association today and a political trade union which tries to bring back Gautabe and Mahindra Rajapaksha. There are projects at work behind trade union action to bring them back to power. The GMOA is not doing what is required for the country. We sign a trade union agreement for profit and we can't ignore them just because it is not profitable to a certain group. If we keep discussing if an agreement is to the taste of the GMOA or others, we can never move forward as a country. In the meantime, speaking at a media briefing, the Government Medical Officers Association responded to the allegations levelled by the parliamentarian. The message we are giving is that the Singapore pre trade agreement is directly related to the health sector. All these issues we are taking as a country, as, as citizens of this country, is relevant to the doctors and to the whole of the country. Therefore, to uh, honorable MPs and other uh, ministers who talked about this uh, so called pre trade agreement and the activities of the GMO trade union action, we have to say that before having allegations against the GMOA, you better read the Singapore agreement. The joint opposition intends to stage a mass protest in Colombo on the 2nd of next month to demonstrate their displeasure over several issues, including the sale of national resources to foreign nations. The announcement was made by parliamentarian Vimal Virawansa as he addressed a media briefing of the joint opposition's leaders in Colombo today. This government is one that sells all national resources which could nurture future generations to international countries and forces that supported them to come to power. We haven't seen such a government in recent times. They're influencing the judiciary as well. The country's political leadership has come to a stage where ministers who came into politics from the entertainment sector and got ministerial posts throw tantrums when going for court hearings against them. Minister and Deputy Minister of Wildlife are fighting over a vehicle. Minister Arjun Ranatunga clearly said that this government destroyed the game of cricket in the country. Then Deputy Minister Buddhi Kapatirna says it's embarrassing to be a part of this government. Venerable Ratana Thera has also realized the truth as time passed. While reminding that the Thera aided these people to gain power, we admire his decision to denounce the government. People in many countries around the world have protested against their leaders and seen them stepping down from their posts. People of this country too are ready to do the same. That's why we are organizing a mass protest called Jana Balasena on the 2nd of August. We won't stop there. We will hold another mass protest march on the 5th of September, which will ensure a sea of people bearing down on Colombo. 
Secretary General of the Commonwealth, Patricia Scotland, will arrive in Sri Lanka tomorrow for a four-day official visit. This will be her first visit to Sri Lanka since she assumed the role of Secretary General in April 2016. Ministry of Foreign Affairs said in a statement that Patricia Scotland will call on Prime Minister Rana Wickremesinghe and meet with the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dilak Marapana, tomorrow evening. Scotland it was also due to meet Minister of Development Strategies and International Trade Malik Samara Vikrama, Leader of the Opposition R. Sampandan and several other ministers. The main objective of her meeting is to explore greater cooperation and collaboration in the implementation of the agreed outcomes at the 2018 Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting in London. Following last week's blood moon, there will be another spectacle in the night sky tonight as the fourth planet from the Sun and the second smallest planet in the solar system, Mars, could be seen at its brightest, 1.8 times of its normal glow. The phenomenon occurs as a result of the red planet coming closest to the Earth in 15 years. NASA says Earth and Mars will be even closer, but we will have to wait another 17 years for that. Right now, Mars is at its closest approach to the Earth in 15 years, as the two planets are just 35.8 million miles apart. This means Mars is placed opposite to the Earth in a straight line with the Sun and the Earth. The last occurrence of this nature was witnessed back in 2003. Back then, Mars was even closer to Earth. In fact, it was the closest it had been for 60,000 years. While it is not as close this time around, it is still going to look incredible in the night sky. The next similar occurrence approach is not slated to occur for another 17 years. The mass is coming closer to the Earth today and it is 57.6 million kilometers close. That means a beam of light from Earth will take 189 seconds to reach Mars. And therefore the mass is bigger than any other day and also much brighter. This kind of event will again take place in 2020 and thereafter 2035. According to NASA on the 11th of September in 2035, Earth and Mars will be even closer at a distance of 35.4 million miles. You are watching Sri Lanka's award-winning news channel, Other Verana 24-7. In your business news, Sri Lanka's 12-month inflation accelerated to 5.4% in July 2018, up from 4.4% in June, with prices rising 0.3% in the month. Data from the state statistics department showed Colombo Consumer Price Index rising to 125.8 points, with food prices rising 0.9% and non-food segment rising 0.1%. Consumer prices fell in the first quarter, with the index falling absolutely from 122.8 in December 2017 to 121.4 in April this year. Prime Minister Ranil Wickremesinghe points out that job creation and the development of the tourism industry go hand in hand as the industry has a high rate of employment opportunities. Addressing an event held in Colombo last evening, the Premier said that the development of the tourism industry would even lead to ample self-employment opportunities. The ceremony to launch the programme dubbed Tuk Tuk, which is geared towards creating a tourist-friendly three-wheeler service, was held at the Gold Face Green under the patronage of Prime Minister Ranil Wickremesinghe with the attendance of Minister of Finance Mangala Samaravira last evening. Prime Minister symbolically distributed certificates and gave the seal of approval to three-wheeler drivers who successfully completed their training under the programme Tuk Tuk, worked off by the Sri Lanka Tourism Development Authority. <laughs> Tourism is an industry which generates money. If the tourism industry develops in any country, more jobs are created. When a room is built at a hotel, at least one person gets an employment opportunity. It is also a means which creates self-employment. Therefore, that is one of the industries which generates most employment opportunities. As a result, we see this endeavour as a move which will develop the tourism industry, improve income and increase the number of tourists. 
Still in business news, John Keels Holdings has reported weak results for the quarter, which ended in June this year. Data released by the Colombo Stock Exchange reveals that despite an impressive 12% increase in revenue, margins were compressed, translating to a 23% drop in the bottom line compared to the June quarter of 2017. The company earned 2.2 billion rupees for the quarter on revenue of 30 billion rupees. The company's market capitalization is the second largest on the Colombo Stock Exchange at 1.25 billion US dollars. The share ended 2 rupees and 7 cents down to close at 142 rupees on Thursday after the results were released on the Colombo Stock Exchange. These results are posted ahead of a change of leadership next year where Deputy Chairman Krishan Balendra will become Chairman and Chief Executive Officer of the group. And on to the Colombo Stock Exchange, uh, Sri Lankan shares ended their losing spree to close higher today as investors picked up battered blue chip stocks but lean first quarter corporate results dampened sentiment. The SPI ended 0.3% firmer at 6,147.27, edging up from its lowest close since July 12th on Monday. The Bose has dropped 3.5% so far this year. Turnover stood at 409.9 million rupees, less than this year's daily average of 856.1 million rupees. Foreign investors in the meantime sold equities net worth 731,474 rupees during the session, extending the year-to-day net foreign outflow to 2.5 billion rupees worth of equities so far this year. Analysts said that a downward revision in economic growth estimate earlier this month by the central bank hurt market sentiment. Well, the local currency ended steady in dull trade today as dollar demand from importers offset selling off the greenback by banks. The rupee, which traded at 159.80 per dollar during the day, ended steady at 159.65 to 75 per dollar. We take a look at how the Sri Lankan rupee traded against other major currencies around the world today. On to your international news, media reports say that North Korea appears to be building new ballistic missiles despite recent warming ties with U.S. President Donald Trump's administration. Unnamed U.S. officials have told media that spy satellites had spotted continuing activity at a, spa, at a site that had produced ballistic missiles before. Latest media reports accuse North Korea for renewing their missile building based on information from unnamed U.S. officials. They say that spy satellites have spotted continuing activity at the site that has produced ballistic missiles. The fresh claims come amid warming ties with North Korean leader Kim Jong-un and U.S. President Donald Trump following their summit in June. Meanwhile, South Korea's foreign ministry said today that it was closely monitoring the North's movements. Reuters quoted a senior U.S. official as having said that photos and infrared imaging indicate vehicles moving in and out of the facility at Sanumdong, but do not show how advanced any missile construction might be. Well, Zimbabwe has seen a high voter turnout in polls, which is the first general election to be held after Robert Mugabe was ousted as president last year. Mugabe was in power from 1987 to 2007, and the election is the first to not feature him in over three decades. Polling closed last night in Zimbabwe, with election authorities reporting a 75% voter turnout throughout the country. A record 23 candidates participated in the race for the presidency. However, the election mainly pits incumbent President Emerson Magangwa against opposition MDC Alliance leader Nelson Kamisa, both promising to focus on the country's ailing economy if elected. 
Leading up to the election, ousted President Robert Mugabe was somewhat bitter about losing the presidency to Magangwa last year and suggested opposition candidate Kamisa was the better choice over Magangwa of his own party. Zimbabwe deployed about 71,000 security personnel to ensure a peaceful election that was supervised by more than 5,500 domestic observers and more than 600 foreign observers. The election result is expected to be released by the 4th next month. You are watching Sri Lanka's premier news channel, Avadharana 24-7. Veteran Sri Lanka Cricketers Minister Arjuna Ranathunga and Arvind De Silva today responded to allegations levelled against them by former President of Sri Lanka Cricket, Parliamentarian Thilanga Sumathipala, where he said that Arjuna and Arvind are the first Sri Lankan players to be accused of match-fixing. Arvind De Silva refuted any suggestion of match-fixing and said that they never entertained any individual who approached them as the management was well informed of any such approach. There were approaches which we brought to the notice of the management at that time when there was no responsibility upon the players to bring it to anyone's notice, unlike these days. Now there is under the contract, you are supposed to do it. We could have just kept it to ourselves, but we wanted to make sure that none of the players will get exposed. If we wanted to, why, why should we just bring it to the notice of the management? Because there was no reason. World Cup winning captain Minister Arjuna Ranatunga also expressed views over the recent ball tampering allegations Sri Lanka faced during the tour of the West Indies. It's a ball tampering issue. I, I personally felt that we didn't handle it properly. Ultimately, the way we handled things was not professional enough. If we have realized that we have done something wrong, we should have reacted it in a different manner rather than a different aggressive manner. I personally feel if the present cricket board is involved in fixing in domestic matches, I think it will drag into international matches as well. So these are the things we need to be very actively watch what will happen. So I personally feel uh, if the ICC has given a directive, I, I think that will be ultimate. It's not a major incident as far as I see it. You need to work on the head, not from the heart. You are watching Sri Lanka's number one news channel, other than 24-7. A very good evening everyone and welcome to Forecast First. With the school holidays approaching, weather in the northern, eastern and northwestern parts of the country are said to be bone dry, with temperatures expected to reach as high as 35 degrees Celsius, especially in the Batiklo district. Holiday makers seeking milder weather can get their wish in the central province as temperatures in the region of 20 degrees are expected in the hills tomorrow. Looking at your rain forecast now, there is not much rain activity to report except for some light showers in the lower region of the island. Now, as we mentioned before, stargazers are in for a real treat tonight as planet Mars comes closest to Earth. So don't forget to look to the east-southeastern horizon. The red planet will be much more brighter than usual and it will be safe to observe it with the naked eye. That exciting news wrap things up here at the Weather Centre tonight. Let's now take a look at your city-by-city city forecast. That's all from First at Nine, but before we go, as usual, we'd like to leave you with some visuals. And today we take you to the monastery of Ritigala. Ruins and rock inscriptions at the monastery date back to the first century BC. The monastery is located approximately 43 kilometers away from the ancient kingdom of Anuradhapur. Have a pleasant evening. Enjoy the visuals. Good night. Bringing you the news and information 24 hours a day. This is Sri Lanka's premier news channel. Other Verana 24 7.